This was the man upstairs, his plan for me to prepare Tiger for his responsibilities in life. He is so different. It is in many ways like seeing a new species for the first time. Hello. He knew where he wanted to go. Uh, he knew who he was, and he had a tremendous amount of drive and determination. You could see it in his eyes. He's a perfectionist, and he's a workaholic. He has a lot of passion for the game. Those three words, I think, you know, make up Tiger Woods. I see him as a lightning rod, uh, a person who can bridge the gap between races. Tiger Woods! He has tremendous charisma and personal presence. He's utterly dynamic. He's got the complete package between his ears, and that's what, that's what you have to have. Who would have ever dreamed that a golfer would have come along and had such an impact in worldwide sports? I mean, we just wouldn't have dreamed that. His best years are still ahead of him, and I think he'll go down as the greatest athlete who ever lived. The world of golf knew he was coming from the age of two. The rest of the planet didn't take long to catch up. <laughs> I've, I've just been very, very lucky um, and, and very blessed in, in my life. I've had a lot of different things that are positive happen in my life. Um, it's just hard to explain. You know, it's just. Has this come about because of someone's greater plan? I don't know. I really don't. Some people are born to make an impact. When they walk into a room or walk by you in the street, heads turn. Aura, personality, charisma, call it what you like. Tiger Woods has it. They brought this young man out and I'd heard of Tiger Woods and uh, uh, they had him hit a couple of shots and beautiful golf swing and you know, I followed his career ever since. So. A friend of mine was gonna go watch this youngster play golf here in California. And we had an off day. I was playing for the LA Kings at the time. And we had an off day. And I said, well, that sounds like a good thing to do. You know, how old is he? He said, well, he's 11. And I said, well, 11? I, I don't really wanna go see a kid play golf who's 11 years old. And my friend said, no, no, this guy's going to be the greatest athlete ever. And uh, his name is Tiger Woods. And of course, the rest is history. I'll never forget the first time I, I went to Tiger's house. That, uh, you know, I walked inside the front door and you, know, you wave your way into the living room. And uh, he's got a big screen television in there. And right on top of the TV are his master's trophies. And then you look around to the right and you've got all oh, your British Open and your PGA and then your U.S. Open, and then all of a sudden you realize that all of his major's trophies are right here in his living room, and he keeps them right there. And, uh, and even at Christmas time, he leaves his trophies there, but just wraps Christmas lights around them. When you meet him in person, he's so sweet. He's such a little boy. He's young. Very well appearing and uh, uh, physically very fit and mentally uh, seeking to learn and to do the right thing. It was a mutual uh, re respect and uh, it, was a, it was a connection, it was a bond and he had a certain confidence about him, you know, and those are all traits I feel like I have and that was the bond, you know, and um, 
it began a you know big brother little brother relationship, and uh, and we want to see each other do well. You know, be it in business, be it in our sports, be it in life. You know, um, and we have conversations about all of them. You know, and we have laughs about them all too. I think the thing that struck me the most was what a natural talent it was. Uh, it was kind of a raw, unrefined talent, but just an unbelievable talent. You know, everybody talks about how far he hit the ball, then, which he did, but I was more impressed with his uh, creativity and the type of shots he could hit. It was, it was very impressive for such a young guy to have so much talent. We come out of uh, the restaurant, and it's London, and so there's paparazzi everywhere. I don't know what to do. I mean, I've certainly never had paparazzi following me. So, um, you know, I'm, you know, standing in front of Tiger. I got my arms waving every which way, you know, blocking his face, blocking this. I didn't know what the hell to do. So I'm making a complete fool out of myself, and I can see Tiger just kind of looking at me like, another agent gone. And uh, we get back to the car, and we're about to get in. He puts his arm around me, he said, Let's just, let's just understand. My life is crazy. Welcome to my world. You're gonna have to calm down a little bit. He called me out of the blue and asked if he'd come to my party. And I said, of course you can come to my party. And that night we just sit there and talked and went out for a little while. And then he said to me, what are you doing tomorrow? And I originally was planning on leaving. He said, well, I'm playing golf in the morning. If you wanna play, we can play. And the funnest thing about the whole evening was I had two of my friends in the back seat and they were punching me in the back of the head. Tell me, ask can we play? And it was really funny. And I said, can these two jackasses play? And he said, sure. And uh, we went out and played. And ever since then, we've been great friends. On the practice range at home, Tiger doesn't seem all that different from any other avid golfer. OK apart from the swing. An early morning start. A bucket of balls to hit. Total concentration. Constant analysis. In simple terms, he's just a pro who wants his game to get better. Every day. Here's an example. The day after Tiger won the 2000 PGA Championship, he was right here on the range, practicing. There's always someone out there who was better than me growing up. Whether it was a kid in Southern California when I was competing in junior golf, um, then I went into national junior golf, there's always someone better than me. Then amateur golf, there's always someone better than me. Um, now you get into professional golf. When I first started, there's always people better than me. And even now, to this day, there are people who are better than me in different facets of the game. And I watch and I analyze and I'll try and learn to try and make my game even better. So there's always, I'm always trying to get a little bit better. You always, I guess you're greedy in a sense. So what is the essence of Tiger Woods? It's all about his mind, body, and so. Tiger has the agility of a gymnast. People don't know that. But he does. Stretching exercises, he will do things that you will say the human body is not supposed to do. Well, physically, he's got a perfect build. You know, he's got fast twitch muscles. You know, if he was a sprinter, he'd be an excellent sprinter. He's, he's very, very quick, and that helps him in his golf swing. You look at all the great golfers of the world, they had tremendous rotation. Their belt buckle went from here to almost 90 degrees over here in their backswing. That gave you the rotation, the depth, and the width in your golf swing to generate the power and the speed. Tiger's not a, an overly heavy individual, but he, he uses his leverage tremendously well. Tiger is probably the hardest working guy I've ever met in my life as far as like getting up, running, lifting weights, and banging golf balls, you know, six, seven hours a day. And I've never met any athlete who 
worked as hard on his game as Tiger, and that's just the truth. Practice. I mean, he's always on the driving range. Um, you know, he'll call, or I'll call and say, hey, you want to tee off around 12? And so, yeah. Um, and he'll be on the range at like 8. He'll run four or five miles, he'll ride a stationary bike, and then he'll lift weights, uh, he stretches, all the things that he needed to do to make himself not, not a golfer, but an athlete. Well, I think that uh, Tiger Woods is, uh, is gifted, clearly. That, uh, but there are a lot of people who have physical gifts, and I think the thing that lifts him you know, beyond what others do is, uh, is his mind. That basically he takes those physical gifts and uh, he studies the game and he works at it very, very hard. He sees T, fairway, and green. He has walked past me, I don't know how many times, within two feet of me and never acknowledged me. And I'll say at the end of the round, T.W., you know, I said, spoke to you on the 13th tee. He says, oh, Peter, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. And yet, what's really intriguing about it is he can ride the wave if the fans, and he feels the attention of the fans if he's playing well, he can feel that and sense it and take his game to an even higher level, which is the thing that absolutely amazes me. He knows his presence. He knows himself. And sometimes the hardest person to get to know is yourself. Uh, but he knows himself. He knows how to deal with it. And, and that's why his mental strength has been a, probably his 15th and 16th club in his bag. You know, I used to will the ball into the hole a lot. I mean, I just got up over and I said, you know, I need to make this putt. It's got to go in. And I've seen Tiger get himself in that position and do exactly the same thing. And, you know, he's, he just, good players or great players have to do that. Uh, you just have to get the ball in the hole when you have to get it in the hole. It's got to go in and you make it. If you don't, you're not a great player and they don't write about you anyway. That's the zone. That's what happens. It unfolds. You're not absorbed into the technical elements of how to. It's rather that you're just absorbed into the moment and you just react. You let it happen. His career is replete with a tremendous golf shot that everybody steps back later and says, how did he do that? At that moment, he's just creating it. It's unfolding, it's happening. Clear, uncluttered mind, trusting, letting it unfold in the zone. It's remarkable. It's a great gift that he has, but it's also a gift that he's worked very hard to develop. You should learn something from each and every single round you play in. Every single round you should learn something. Whether it's one thing, it might be 20 things. Learn something from each and every round. And I've done that. Every round that I've played, I've come back home, I've critiqued my round, I've looked at it from the mental and mechanical side, what went wrong, what went right, and um, apply it to the next day. He's got a strong mind, we know that, and he's got a great physique and he's got a great work ethic and, he, and he's, he's a great player, but uh, in my opinion, I think it's just his 100% trust and belief in what he's trying to achieve and what he's doing. I would say Nolan Tiger is a certain confidence about himself, you know, and that can always be misconstrued to arrogance, you know. Every successful guy, Every, in, in business, in golf, in basketball, in football, in ba have that sense of confidence about himself that others may consider to be arrogant. I would like to think that I was an aggressive player. Uh, someone said that you were, that you played shots that uh, you shouldn't have played and it cost you tournaments. There's no question about that, but there was never a shot that I didn't think I could play. And I think that's Tiger. I've never seen a guy, you know, be able to flip the switch from loose and laid back to wanting to absolutely kill somebody uh, like he does, you know, and, and not only does he just want to win, but he wants to just bury you. 
It's a story I tell many people. It's a par four there at Wentworth, and I hit it about maybe two feet, a foot and a half behind the hole, and he hit it on the back edge. And he putted it down and damn near made his putt for birdie. And so I threw him his ball back, and I just expected him to give me my putt. And he turned his back to me and started facing the, the 12th tee. So I looked around, and there was about 5,000 or 3,000 people in the gallery, and I didn't know what to do. And so I started to mark my ball, and I put my ball down, and I turned around, and I said, Tiger. And he says, he turned around, I says, what? I said, you could give me this at home, wouldn't you? <laughs> you would make me put that at home? I'll make sure. I'm going to remember that next week. <laughs> looked at me and he says, well, you haven't won a hole yet, have you? And I'm like, whoa, all righty, fine. Yeah! So I put it in, he's laughing on the back of the green, and so I finally won my first hole. And I walked back to him and I said, let me tell you something, pal. I said, if you ever make me putt a putt like that again, our friendship is over. It's hard to explain, I guess it's just sport, because it's, it's what we do. That's what we we have to do in order to win. I'm not there in a tournament to to have fun and, and talk to my buddies and enjoy being around them. I'm there to win the tournament. Now after the tournament's over with, hey, let's go party. Let's go have a great time. He has such a tremendous love of self and pride that all these things just bounce off. But he has been taught that everything comes from within. It all starts with you. And if you just believe in yourself, you don't need those other people. And you can succeed without them. I mean, do I think there are better swings than Tiger's? Probably so. Do I think there are probably people that can drive the ball further than Tiger? Do I think there are people who can drive it straighter than Tiger? Yes. Do I think there are people who can probably hit better iron shots? Yes. Do I think that people can probably putt better? Yes. But can they do it when they have to do it? He's not afraid to lose. He's not afraid to fail. You can see in the way that he swings the club and the way that he swings the putter that he doesn't want the club back. He wants the responsibility that will come after the particular shot that he's hitting. And that's what makes a true champion. It's all right, I accept what's gonna happen after I hit this, I'm gonna go do it again. And I'm gonna do it less often than everybody else. I knew if I ever failed, I could always come back and be with two people who love me, no matter what happened. So it always encouraged me to get out there and, and try, because if I did fail, I could always come home and everything would be okay. Anyone who's ever played the game can relate to us. Um, I can't relate to someone who can dunk from the foul line or who can kick a soccer ball 60 yards in the air. I can't relate to that because I can't do that. Um, they can relate to us, us golfers, because they can do that. They can make a six foot putt. Uh, they can hit, hit that shot 100 yards and know how it feels to be nervous because there's water there, there's bunkers there, uh, there's trouble everywhere. They know how that feels. And so it is fascinating to, to people who have played the game on any level, whether they're, they're great at it or they're terrible at it, it doesn't matter. It is fascinating because that they can relate to what we're going through. They can see the internal struggles on our face. Look at the wind going, okay, now I'm confused. Throw up the grass, it goes this way. Throw up the grass, it goes that way. And you're trying to figure it out because they've been there. They know how that feels. What is harder to comprehend is the magnitude of Tiger's stardom. Why is the man idolized by so many? Isn't he just a golfer? Sure, and Michael Jordan just shot some hoops. I think his, his whole uh, personality, I think his, his, his talent, I think his, his, the whole phenomenon of, of 
he saw a dream, he saw an opportunity. You know, that becomes infectious to see someone have a dream about being the greatest golfer and then put forth the work. How can you not admire a certain situation, that dedication? I think when you, when you talk to people, when I've talked to people, uh, they see Tiger as someone who has earned his place uh, in the sport of golf and, frankly, in life. I don't want you to let go. He calls himself Cavalasian, that he's Caucasian and African and, and Asian, and, and so he draws from all the groups. There's something about the way Tiger walks down a fairway. There is a magnetism there that uh, makes you sit back and say, you know, it's like he was really born to be this poster child, if you will, this image of golf. Well, even before I met him, when I saw him the first time, I honestly thought, and I'm not the only one, I thought he looked so gorgeous. Well, first of all, he's not good looking. Let's get that straight. He's not good looking. But you know what? And Michael Jordan's not good looking either. I mean, actually, Michael Jordan's ugly. But you know what? They have great charisma. And obviously, for someone who's going to be on TV, the charisma and the big smile and the beauty, it always helps to kind of come across and get to the audience. We're used to seeing athletes choking each other in the end zone or making slashing gestures or gloating or, or whatever. All of a sudden there was this kid out there that just looked like it was such a treat for him to be on the golf course that it was a kid's game, that he was enjoying himself. It gave him goosebumps and whenever he smiled, you know, he just lit up the screen. Plus he's got a cool nickname. What could be a better golf nickname than Tiger Woods? And on top of it, He's a really handsome guy. N not only is he handsome, no one looks like this guy. He's not generically handsome. He doesn't look Tiger like Woods. anybody except Tiger Woods. His smile, the, his physical presence on a golf course. I think if you knew nothing about golf, and if you'd, been, you'd landed here from the planet Pluto, and they, they sat you down at Augusta, your eyes would go to him. You'd say, who's that guy? That's the guy I want to watch. You'd just be drawn to him. He's transcended his sport in a variety of ways primarily because he's a minority, but mostly because the way he plays, he plays with an aggression and an intensity that you don't see very often. And that's why guys like Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan were so popular, is because they knew how to win, and they could win under the most dire circumstances. There are a lot of parallels between, uh, between Michael Jordan and, and Tiger Woods, and it isn't just that he wins. It's sort of how he wins, uh, that uh, in the dramatic moment he comes up with the big shot and uh, that, uh, that his mind is as important as, as his uh, shot making in, in so many ways. And uh, I, I think all of that uh, that uh, just registers with, uh, with sports fans. The bottom line is he still just loves to play golf and he's like, He's like every mommy's boy out there. It's like, it could be your kid. And Tiger is definitely a role model for the next generation. Um, I know that I was able to look up to him from a, from a young age, you know, age 13 or 14, you know, up to now. And I also know the people coming behind me look up to Tiger. My kids idolize him. They look up to him as a great role model, and that's most important as a parent, that my kids can idolize someone that truly is a good person. What I've told Tiger all along was not only just try to be a great champion, be a class individual, because no matter how great a golfer Tiger Woods is, or any of us when it comes to hitting the golf balls, you know, everybody else that's out there watching Tiger or pulling for Tiger, they have their special gift in life too. They can do things in certain areas of life that much better than Tiger Woods can do. So never really lose sight of that. And I don't think Tiger has. And I, I think he is by far one of the most humble, most gracious champions that we've ever seen that has come along. And, and to do all this stuff at 27, 28 years of age is 
phenomenal. Just only credit to his family, to his father, and to his mother, and the way they brought Tiger up. Uh, the fascinates of him because his talent and his personality, I guess. Might be because I'm his mother. <laughs> That's the way I think. First and foremost, I'm a golfer. I'm not a politician, I'm a golfer. And I'm in a position, yes, where I can influence people's lives in a positive way, especially little kids. Not everyone has the opportunity to affect a lot of lives in a positive way. I do. One moment illustrates Tiger's impact on the game. 16th hole, Phoenix Open, January 97. Right now, if you'd ask somebody, what is the game of golf, and I think most people would say Tiger Woods. Uh, you ask somebody what baseball is, it's hard to press, to, they won't name one person. They'll probably say, you know, for the most part, they'll say the New York Yankees. Uh, but, you know, it's a team, it's, it's not an individual. Tiger is an individual that, uh, that really uh, stands out up here. Yeah, I think any sport, would love to have the number one athlete in the world or the most recognized athlete in the world as part of their sport, and we have him. And what he has meant is, is profound. I think in the short term, he's meant a huge increase in interest. That translates into more successful tournaments, more successful television, more dollars for the players, uh, more kids paying attention. Um, he's led to a diversification of not just the fan base of the professional sport, but also uh, the participation side of the sport. And uh, I think everybody in the PGA Tour, staff, player, uh, is indebted to Tiger for what he's meant to the sport. Playing in his first tournament as a professional, would you please welcome Tiger Woods. I want to be at the place where I could against the best and that was the tour and that's where I wanted to get to I want to play against the best period I was playing a tour event just prior to his announcement to turn pro and there was a lot of skeptics a lot of professionals that were like well bring him on out here let's see what the kid got and I was just very quiet and very sort of biting my tongue because I just like you guys don't know what you're asking for I mean this I've seen this kid play and I've seen him practice and I've seen him compete and once he gets the handle of the professional game he's just gonna dominate and and usually he proves me right in that particular case he did well th there was a lot of hype and there's always a certain cynicism among the pro ranks, yeah, okay, you know, U.S. amateurs this, U.S. amateurs whatever, you know, this is a different game now, you know, you're in the big league, let's, let's see how you do. Wow. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> yeah, it was different. I think at first there was a lot of jealousy because of the big Nike contract and the big uh, Titleist contract, but I think once they saw him play, and once they got to meet the young man and saw what a great kid he was and what a great talent he was, players respect talent. And I think when he first came out, there was this big hoopla and there was this belief that, well, he's never really played good in a pro tournament. And then when he came out instantly, one in Las Vegas, one at the Disney, all of a sudden all of that changed because they realized what a talent he was. Tiger wasn't just changing the game in the U.S. All over the world, his impact was the same. Tiger mania had begun. It was like Elvis. It was the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Uh, it, all of a sudden, uh, a golf tournament, there was a, a sort of a rock concert atmosphere. 
There was this uh, one slender child out there that, that had this magnetic personality and, and the beautiful smile and the most incredible game to go with it. In less than a year as a pro, Tiger had changed the golfing landscape forever. When Tiger Woods is in the field, it changes tournaments, definitely. Um, I think every event that he's in, when the history books are written, it'll have a little asterisk beside the event. You know, Tiger Woods was in the field. Uh, because it is different. There's more media, there's more coverage, there's more buzz. Um, we can even see more security in the locker rooms when Tiger is there. No, it's about the same. You just got to add about 35,000 people. Otherwise, it's just the same. Yeah, it's tremendous. I mean, you can sense it not only in the gallery, uh, but also in the players. I don't think they would ever admit that, uh, and they should, because it's not a sign of, of, uh, of worshiping. It's just a fact. I mean, when he's there, there's a buzz to the tournament. The fans feel it, the media feels it, and the players feel it. Most people, friends of mine, who only turn on a golf tournament to see where Tiger is. If Tiger's not playing in a golf tournament, they're not going to watch. If Tiger's not in contention, they turn it off. And if Tiger's in contention, they don't turn it off. It's their whole mindset is based on what Tiger's doing. Generally speaking, if Tiger's in contention, especially at a big event, the ratings zoom. If Tiger falls out of contention, there's no chance for him to make a move. The ratings dip, uh, which is why, and you can't blame them, the networks will often follow Tiger and get as many shots of him on screen as possible, even when he's nine, ten strokes off the lead. And then you hear people speculate, well, you never know. It's Tiger. He could make a move. He's only eight shots down with three to play. I mean, he could have three straight eagles, and somebody else could, you know, go lock, stock, and barrel in the lake, and you never know. While television ratings, tournament attendances, and prize monies have all multiplied as a direct result of Tiger's presence, what became just as visible was the way he changed how the game is played. Something that I have always treated golf as, I've treated golf as a sport. And because I've played other sports growing up as a kid and competing against people who, who did train in that sport, we all trained physically to become better able to compete. You know, it would be asinine for someone to go ahead and not train to play American football or for someone not to train to play basketball. So that's why I do all the lifting. That's why you know, I do all the running. I do all the training that it, it takes to become physically prepared to play. Tiger made people aware of the fact that with the proper fitness regimens, proper training programs, the more fit you get, the sharper your mind is, the better you'll play for a long period of time. And I think the other players actually realized that this kid was so good and so motivated, if they didn't get better, he was going to run off and leave them. And I think it's what's really helped the game because it's motivated all the players to get better, to work harder, to strive to be better, and it's made the competition so much better. People looked upon golfers as golfers. Uh, and he's made the golf world professional athletes. You have to be a professional athlete now to compete with the Tiger Woods of the world. Um, that's just something that I know he's very proud of and I know he always considered himself a pro athlete, not just a golfer. He has a certain strength about him that he tried to improve on. He comes to my house and he puts shorts and t-shirts on and I think he's a linebacker. You know, he looks like a little defensive back or something like that. That's where he's trying to innovate the game. He physically looks like an athlete. Tiger has raised the bar so high that expectations of him have become unreal. Never has a sport expected its star player to perform at his best so often, so consistently. The burden is intense. He said that people exaggerate when he doesn't do well, you know, when they start saying he's in a slump. But they exaggerate just as much when he is playing well. And all of a sudden, he's hitting shots that no other golfer has ever hit in their life. 
And that's unfair to the game, and it's unfair to him. But I think that's the hysteria uh, that comes with Tiger Mania. He wants people to put that kind of pressure on him in a good way because it helps him. It helps him to go further. It helps him to achieve, to fight. He's a fighter. And when people are cheering for us, I'm telling you, we want to go for it. I can sense the amount of pressure that not only he has on himself, but the feeling that the gallery has these high, unbelievable expectations that Tiger Woods should hit every shot absolutely perfect. And when he doesn't, everybody's somewhat shocked. But, you know, he's not perfect. I mean, no human being is perfect, nor is Tiger Woods. But when it comes to golf, he's about as close as anyone's ever gotten. And not just when it comes to golf. Nice to be here. Marker. Go behind the scenes at a commercial, and it's not hard to see why the world's top businesses want to be associated with Tiger. Looking for your ball, looking for your ball. So this is what the rough looks like. He's taken sports marketing to a whole new level. Endorsement deals with the likes of American Express, Buick, and Nike have helped put him on course to be the world's first billionaire athlete. Walking slow, walking slow. We wanted to start capturing a much younger, more affluent, um, a group of consumers um, that would be buying our products. So we were looking for something that would signal what the future would be, which is performance, which is youth, which is vibrancy. And Tiger really embodied all of that. When we're able to align with someone who, you know, so clearly personifies our brand, who is popular among the people who we're trying to target as customers, um, certainly we see um, opportunity, we see changes, we see improvements in how people look at the brand. Can I join you? Be my guest. Tiger's involvement goes way beyond just the name association. Every campaign and product has his personal stamp of approval. You hooked it. I mean, kind of what we do is uh, obviously uh, set out all before the public, but uh, it's, it's always uh, kind of been the same. It's, uh, it's been great athlete, great product, great marketing. Uh, you can kind of create magic. The difficulty isn't in the strategy. The difficulty is in the execution. The execution, I think, that people don't really understand is uh, what an important part that the athlete can play in, in building great product because uh, most of the great ones uh, have a definite ideas on what they want in terms of product. Tiger Wood has changed the way golfers dress, the way golf companies make clothing, and they actually got good looking stuff now. I think from a fashion standpoint, he's made golf cool, good looking, and, and I think that's great. Perhaps the greatest impact Tiger has had is on the demographics of golf. There are more minorities and juniors playing the game than ever before. Tiger has shattered the stereotype. They don't see a person who is of ethnic uh, background. They'll see a, an Asian mother. They don't see an, uh, a black father. All they see is a golfer in front of them. And uh, that's all kids see. And uh, that's why it's so much fun for me to, to work with kids, because that's all they do see. They see a, a golfer in front of them. Uh, they don't, there's no such thing as color. Color is learned um, as we get older. All they see is a human being in front of them that can hit a golf ball. Golf is a sport that usually has a positive impact on anyone who plays it. And Tiger knows that, he's, that he was fortunate, particularly with his background, to have access to the sport. And that if he can have that type of impact, bringing more kids of all races and all backgrounds to the sport, then that'll be the longest lasting legacy of his career. kids who love basketball but love to go out and play golf and hit, and hit golf balls, you know, and I think 
Tiger Woods had a lot to do with that, you know. In all honesty, if I was a kid growing up today and I watched Tiger Woods play golf, I don't know how much, you know, how good a basketball player I would be because I would probably end up playing more golf than playing basketball. Uh, that's the influence that he has in terms of how he's waking up a life of, of a sport in, in a demographics that we never thought would even happen. On the range where Tiger used to practice as a child, this is the crowded scene every day after school. Well, I think the kids really connect with Tiger because he has a passion about the game. You know, when he makes a putt, he gets all pumped up. You know, no, man, that looks fun. Hey, well, I want to go do that. And I see kids all the time there. I see them not only practice their drives, they practice their tiger pump, you know. So, you know, he brings an excitement uh, to golf that we really didn't have in the past. At Stanford, where Tiger went to college, you can see physically talented kids turning to golf rather than to sports they traditionally would play. Just out of mainstream sort of habit, the best athletes in high school will play football or basketball or baseball. And now what's happening, the best quote athletes are saying, you know what, I want to play golf. I want to be on the golf team. I want to get a golf scholarship. And that's where the golf game in the next 15, 20 years is going to be so impacted. It's the inevitability of sports. The people are going to become bigger, stronger, and faster. And Golf has never had athletes play the game of golf. They've been kind of fat and out of shape. And what if you got like a Bo Jackson playing golf or a Michael Jordan playing golf uh, with their strength and their speed, their elasticity, uh, how far they could hit it. I mean, their leverage, being as tall as they are and as long as their arms are, they have a, a, a wonderful leverage and they can hit the ball a ton with proper technique and training at a young age. And that's what's coming up. And I think that's what uh, all, you know, all the golf courses around the world are preparing for, is that there are more young kids that hit the ball longer now than ever. On the golf course, even during a practice round, there's an aloofness about Tiger Woods. Being under constant public scrutiny comes with the territory. We watch Tiger, we study him, we read all we can about him. Yet he remains mysterious, intriguing, an enigma. I guess I'm, I'm on TV and people recognize me for hitting high draws. <laughs> you know, I, or I get a ball in the hole faster than some people do. That's about it. Uh, otherwise, I'm just like everybody else. I just happen to hit this little round thing out there and into a hole faster than most people. The one thing people don't get to see of Tiger Woods and don't realize with him is, you know, how much of a kid he really is. That, uh, you know, as serious and as dedicated as he is uh, on the golf course in front of a camera, you know, he's that laid back and goofy off camera. He loves to watch his cartoons Sunday. You know, you can't get him out of the house until he needs a late tea time on Sunday or Saturday. I don't know what day the cartoons are on, but I know he's watching them. He goes to bed pretty early. He likes to get up at 4 or 4.30, quarter to 5, and he likes to get his, you know, cappuccino or whatever it is. And then he works out in the morning. He's crazy. I mean, I always tell him, we got all day to get up and work out. And we have to do it at 6 a.m. That's, that's just the way he is. He likes to get up. doesn't want to miss a minute of the day, and he wants to get going. He's ready to go. When 9-11 happened, which was, you know, very much in the proximity of our headquarters, Tiger uh, called and said, what can I do? And then did a videotape for our employees, you know, to extend himself to our employees, to, to talk within days of the event, to help the folks here understand his involvement. Like all great competitors, Tiger can talk the talk as well as walk the walk. 
He's like uh, Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and Reggie Miller when it comes to talking trash. And I love to hear him talk trash. And the good thing about it, he can back it up. It's not trash talking if you can back it up. Don't forget that. There was a big backup once at the uh, AT&T Pebble Beach, and he's playing with, with uh, Jerry Chang, who he went to Stanford with. And this nice woman in the crowd, she says, did, did you guys, um, you guys are friends. Yes, we're friends. And, and you graduated from college together? And Jerry says, well, I graduated because Tiger you know, left after two years. And Tiger says, wait a minute, I've got my doctorate degree. He says, where'd you get that? He goes, honorary doctor from uh, in, in Thailand. Jerry says, well, and Tiger says, I've also got a master's. I said, where'd you get that? He goes, Augusta. <laughs> if I make fun of him too much, he'll immediately go to how many masters do you have, and I lose. So, uh, you know, Tiger always has that little, you know, ace in the pocket, so to speak. Well, a couple times we played, and he says, you see where they're building a new Super Walmart? I said, what's Super Walmart? He says, between my ball and your ball. Well, he just talks about, you know, he talks about my bubble butt. And I just told him jealousy just eats at a person. I told him, you know, there's not one guy in the big leagues who hits home run, has a small butt. We all have big butts. It's just the way it is. That's where all the power comes from. And I told him he'd be a little longer if he had a bigger butt. It'd add 30, 40 yards on his drives. We were playing in Las Vegas about a year ago, and it was windy. It was about 45, 50 mile an hour winds. And finally, about the third hole, I looked at him and said, you know, how do I handle this wind? What do I got to do? hit the ball with the wind. And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, what do you mean you don't know? I said, the best player in the game, well, how can you not know? He said, no, he said, if you hit the ball properly like I do, he said, the wind doesn't have any effect on your ball. I said, thanks, where do I go from there? That was his advice on my golf game. He likes to joke and kid around him, even with me. I mean. We play, play pranks on each other like it's nothing, you know. We'll call each other names that we couldn't say publicly, you know. But we have that, you know, leave messages and on each other's phone that only we can hear, you know. Uh, that is, you know, that is the humanistic side of both of us, and we need that, you know. Uh, we need that because of where we are. He's a nerd. He's come a long way. He used to be a real nerd. Now he's just a little nerd. He did, when I first met him, he was a nerd. And like, he was like this nerd, now he's like this. And he's cheap. When he reaches in his pocket, he's gonna break down a lot of cobwebs. He is cheap. It's, I can flip a coin, I don't know who's cheaper, him or Michael Jordan. I think the, the thing I love most about it is I get to do what I love to do. Something I've always wanted to do my entire life, which is compete against the best. And um, as far as the, you know, the periphery and all the other responsibilities that come with it, that's something I've had to grow into and, and learn how to deal with because I, I, there's no book for that. There's nothing that I can, I can ever gain from uh, reading any, any of the how to handle any of that stuff. That's just from experience. I've had some, some friends who've been successful in the sporting world, um, you know, Michael Jordan, Gretzky, and Barkley, and they've given me their two cents on how things, you know, can be handled, mistakes they've made. But every time, they, they all say the same thing. You're gonna have to go through it yourself and find out what works best for you. And um, so there was a learning curve to all that growing up and, and going through the media and going through all the celebrity stuff that comes with it because that's not what, what it's all about. What it's all about is winning. And that's, that's my rush. That's what I want to do. All the other stuff I have to learn how to, how to manage. Bangkok Airport. A typical crowd for Tiger Woods at arrivals. In a world obsessed with celebrities, Tiger is always headline news. Wherever he goes, whatever he does. Well, 
Well, it's it, the level uh, from the days that I was there, television was just beginning. And, and it, was, uh, it was something that I was certainly aware of. You can't ignore it. I think that in, in Tagger's case, uh, it's far more individual attention given to him simply because there's more media, more television. Oh, yeah. I didn't have any pressure when I was a kid, and we didn't really have any pressure as we grew older. Tiger had pressure from the time he's three or four or five years old till, till now, so it's been a normal part of his life, just like not having it was a normal part of my life. It's different. Uh, last you year. have a tremendous amount of responsibility. Um, I've seen it over the years where guys who do get up to the number one in the world and see what all the ancillary expectations are or the baggage that comes with and they go, oh, I don't want to do that, I'm going to step back. Um, so you, if, you, if you want to be the best you can possibly be, and if that takes you to be the number one player in the world, then you've got to assume and accept all the other stuff that comes with it. And Tiger's done a fabulous job with that. I've been a huge fan of his over his entire career of how he's been able to handle that. Good luck, Tiger. Thank you, Dad. We expect a lot from our heroes. We expect them to be perfect all the way around. And, you know, the amazing thing to me about Tiger was when he set the world on fire by winning the 97 Masters by 12 shots. And, you know, hey, the announcement was out there in big, bold print that Tiger Woods has taken over the sport. Suddenly, at the age of, you know, 21, we expected Tiger to have the answer to every world issue. Tiger would go into these media interviews, and not only was he expected to shot by shot go through his round, they, they, they really thought because he excelled in golf that he had the answers to everything. 15, you can't use that speed slot like you I've kind of been the, uh, the root of all evils for Tiger, you know, because I set a certain standard in terms of what people expect and how you have to live up to that. I would like to say it's a mirror of me, but I think he's, he's dealing with a lot more than you know, what I had to deal with and, and, and by himself. You know, I, I always had somebody next to me that I can rely upon on those certain moments, but he's got his caddy, but his caddy's only given him the club. You know, he's got to swing it. I think he handles the fame and, and the, the constant scrutiny very well. Uh, in fact, I have a personal theory about that. I think that Tiger Woods is actually a short, fat, white guy that lives in an underground cave like Batman. You know, he's waiting for a Buick sign in the sky before he appears, you know, comes out, goes in a phone booth, spins around a couple of times, all of a sudden he's Tiger Woods. Because where does he go? I'm Tiger Woods, and this is Tiger Woods PGA Tour Golf. We get an incredible amount of requests uh, from, you know, personal requests, can Tiger come to my birthday party, to business requests, can Tiger come and play golf with my customers, to, you know, ones like, Tiger's never met my 13-year-old son, but he's getting bar mitzvahed next Friday, can Tiger show up? I mean, we get those. And, you know, it's important that we get back to those people. I mean, that's an important request to them. I mean, everybody is, feels that their request is the only one that's coming in that day, so we have to treat it as such. You've got to get a laugh out of some of them, you know? I mean, they're, they're entertaining. I mean, those are, those are fun to get. Well, we live in a celebrity-crazed culture, period. Uh, I used to think that what was interesting about performers was their performance. And if I wanted to hear anything from them or see anything from them besides the performance, it was a discussion of how the performance was created. I didn't really care about where they lived or who they dated, but I'm from, from a different generation. Now, uh, not only have all those lines been blurred within entertainment, but the line between entertainment and sports has been all but completely erased. When we go to dinner together and restaurants together, when Tiger walks in the door and goes from the door to the table, you can always tell where Tiger's going because you hear forks dropping on plates behind him. You know, it's, it's kind of a bit of a musical instrument, just ching, 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 ching. As people recognize it's Tiger, they, you know, they're shocked. Uh, like I say, it's very difficult to be in the limelight. You don't get to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, it's going to be on CNN. That's just how it is. That's one of my favorite sayings. That's just how it is. When you have dinner, people are going to bother you. That's just how it is. 
You know, when you try to go see a movie, people gonna bug you. That's just how it is. But it sure beats the hell out of getting a real job. What I think is unfair about the way we cover Tiger today, and I say we, I'm saying both the print and electronic media, is the double standard that he's always been held to. And by that I mean if someone else does something, it's not quite the story that it is if Tiger does something. I think he's also learned over time that even when he doesn't play well, people are interested in hearing what he has to say. Most golfers, if they shoot a 75 and they're nowhere near the lead, can leave after the 18th hole, and if someone does ask him to speak, can respectfully decline and not much is made about it. Anytime Tiger Woods doesn't talk to the media after any round, whether he's played well or played poorly, uh, if he doesn't speak, that becomes a story. The bigger he gets, the more people are gonna wanna knock him down. That's just the way we live in this world. We want to see people do really well. And then once they get to be the best or, or something phenomenal, people go, OK, now how can we knock them down? So if he doesn't win a major, everyone is in a panic. What's wrong with Tiger Woods, which is so crazy. Listening to analysis and listening to what goes on you know, in the media is it, 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 I get a chuckle out of it because we know so much better and know so much more. And he gets a chuckle out of it, too. He'll call up and say, did you see that or did you hear that? Can you believe that? I'll say, yeah, I can believe that because people don't know any better. I'll tell you what he told me once uh, when I <laughs> asked him if he ever read. This was early 2001, after his great 2000, when he won the nine tournaments and won three majors. And I said something. Uh, I got him in private there a little bit, and I said, did you ever read any of the copy written about you? And he said, no, I didn't need to. I lived it. And then I said, well, you mean all these hundreds and hundreds of stories in magazines and newspapers? He says, you guys don't know what you're writing about. <laughs> so I said, OK. He says, you don't understand what I'm doing. And, and I, can, I can understand what he means. In other words, we don't see the game as he sees the game. As well as the frenzy of interest, in Tiger's present, there is just as much speculation about his future. The future uh, is more now his determination and his desire to continue to be the number one player in the world. Uh, does he have that uh, ability? I think so. I think that uh, for the foreseeable future, Tiger Woods is going to be the dominant player in the game of golf. Uh, if Tiger stays focused and if he wants to do it, if the desire remains at the same level even after he's married and after he's had a family and, and as he gets older, uh, you know, he'll still be the man. I know Tiger's definitely got his eyes set on trying to accomplish some of the same things that Jack did because he, he really respects Jack and, and knows what he meant to the game and, and Tiger has come along and transformed a game that, that probably needed some unbelievable uh, fusion to it and, and Tiger's brought that along. Golf, thankfully, is not the career of a NFL running back over here in America, which lasts for about a four-year span. In Tiger's case, he should have 30 great years. And, you know, let him have the ebb and flow of a career that goes along with the tracking of a great life. He has a personality. He has a lot of power right now. If he were to wield that power in any direction that he wanted to, he could, he could open a lot of doors. His potential is unlimited in whatever endeavor that he wishes to pursue. 
might even become president of the United States, I don't know. <laughs> I think Tiger Woods would be a success in anything he wants to do. Uh, you know, I think someday when he achieves whatever all the goals are that he wants to achieve, and only he knows what those are, I think you'll see Tiger Woods just walk off into the sunset. I think you'll see him just walk off and be with his family and be with his friends and do whatever it is he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. He's going to keep winning. He's going to get married, have a couple kids. and. He's going to start going ball soon. I always ride him about going ball. He's going ball soon, real soon. I, I just want him to enjoy life because he's brought so much joy to us, to the players. I mean, all guys, we're all golfers. We play a lot. We play every day. We love watching Tiger Woods play. We know we're watching a genius. I think that what happens is when you become an elite athlete, people chase after you and try to catch you and in a lot of ways some people do catch you and then the best athletes find ways to overcome that and go to another level and that's what I, I, I truly believe he's got another level that we haven't seen yet and I think that uh, his best years are still ahead of him and I think he'll go down as, as I said earlier greatest athlete who ever lived. So what accolades will satisfy the burning desire of Tiger Woods? 20 golfing majors, a cool billion dollars in the bank, the greatest athlete of them all. All of these, perhaps something else, or something more. I know I could do more, and I'm trying to do more. Um, but you gotta take it step by step. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Golf is not Tiger's primary mission in life. He has a higher calling that will be manifested later in his life. And I don't know what it will be but it will be humanitarian and it will be about children and it will be about caring and sharing. We were at Walt Disney World in Florida and we had all the kids that were visiting from all the cities and Tiger talked to them and he said Golf is not what I'm about. When I finish golf, I'm going to do something for you guys. But it won't be just you guys. It'll be you guys around the world. And I said, what? The first time I broke out in goosebumps. And he had never said anything about it. And he hasn't said anything about it since. But it's there. He feels it. And I see it. Now we all have to wait and experience it. <laughs>